Okay, so when you look outside. Um, I'm honored to be with you, and I, I can't thank uh, the Georgia Public Policy Foundation uh, enough uh, for a variety of things, not the least of which is allowing me to come back and see so many good, uh, good friends that I work with at the state level. I tell you, when I served four terms in the state senate, uh, one, of the, one of the few areas where you could go to always and get concrete uh, information about real solutions uh, uh, was the Georgia Public Policy Foundation. That hadn't changed. That's, uh, that's expanded. And so Rogers and uh, Kelly and, and all, thank you all so much. Thank you for supporting uh, the GPPF. Uh, it is a wonderful, wonderful institution. And really right up there at the top of the, the, the state think tanks uh, out there. So you could be very proud of the work that they're doing. I'm also honored to be on a, on a panel with, uh, with Grace Marie. Uh, you all will recognize her from Fox and uh, uh, other uh, uh, public entities where she gets on the airwaves and, and champions the, the, the right causes. Um, if you don't have Galen.org on your favorites, on your computer, you're missing something. Galen.org uh, is, uh, is the, uh, the website for uh, the Galen Institute that Grace Marie heads. And it is a wealth of information. Uh, about about healthcare issues primarily, but about other things as well. Uh, and it is uh, she updates it. Uh, she, she's one of those individuals who does it real time. If something happens, it's there. It's on Galen.org. So I urge you to uh, uh, to put that on your favorites. Uh, and I'm honored to uh, to be with you today, Grace Marie. Um, I've been asked to to share just a few words about the the Republican uh, federal healthcare strategy on. Uh, policy and politics uh, as it relates to health care. Now that presumes that we have a strategy on policy and politics, right? That's a joke, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> uh, but I, before I did that, I thought I'd just uh, talk a little bit about Ronald Reagan um, because his 100th, uh, the 100th anniversary of his birth uh, is coming up on Sunday. Uh, Betty, my wife, and I were privileged to be out at the Reagan Library this past weekend. Uh, me for the first, both of us for the first time, uh, we joined some others out there. And it, it is, uh, it's a remarkable place, absolutely remarkable place. For those of you who, who've been, you know, for those of you that haven't, I would urge you to take some time to put it on your schedule to get out to the, to the Reagan Library and the museum. The museum is, is uh, uh, just full of, of room after room after room of all this wonderful memorabilia about Ronald Reagan's life, and, and, and you forget, we forget what a, what a giant of a man this was. Uh, and, and in every room there were more and more quotes uh, by Reagan, and, and uh, you all know your favorites. I want to share with you one of mine because it, it relates to strategy. When, when Reagan was on uh, one of his, his campaigns uh, for, for president, he was on a panel of, of candidates and asked uh, what uh, they were asking what the strategy what's your strategy to, to, to solve the, the uh, to end the Cold War um, and and you know go through candidate and candidate and they, and they had to go through their their extensive strategy about how they were going to end the Cold War and it got to Reagan and, and he said well my strategy for ending the Cold War is simple we win they lose <laughs> and so when I look at strategy for health care that's what I see. We win and they lose. And, and it, is, it is so fundamentally um, uh, in, imperative that that happen. Because if you want to pick a poster child for the advancement of, of the, the, the intrusion of the federal government into our lives, it's health care. You, you, know, you can pick a thousand of them, there's no doubt about it. But health care is front and center because there's nothing, nothing more personal that we do in our lives than, than, than provide for the health care for ourselves and for our families. And those decisions that determine what kind of care you receive, who provides it, where it's provided, when it's provided, all of those kinds of things. The last thing we want to do as a society is turn those decisions over to the federal government. And that's precisely, that's precisely what this bill does. And if you don't believe it, Grace Marie and I would be happy to talk to you uh, either in, during the question and answer period or, or uh, offline about why that happens uh, in those 24, uh, 2,400 pages. I want to talk to you very briefly about the, 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 the policy side of it and then touch on the political side and then look forward to your questions. On the policy side, I, I would just tell you that, that what I have been saying and others have been saying uh, uh, over the past uh, 18 to, to uh, 20 months uh, is that this law can't work, this bill couldn't work, the law won't work, and it won't. And you're seeing evidence after evidence, uh, uh, incident after incident of why that is, is indeed true. It doesn't work from a financial standpoint. Uh, Grace Marie talked about the, the now, the, the updated estimate of what the cost is, a tri over a trillion dollars uh, negative to the bottom line uh, for, the, for the country in, in the first 10 years. 
doesn't work for uh, uh, for businesses. I came across a quote uh, of a, or a report, CRS report this past week, um, and I thought it was interesting because you know all these little tidbits that get leaked out or or, or come out, and they want to bury them, so they don't they don't they don't put them in the headlines. This came out just this past week. It was in a CRS, Congressional Research Service report. Medicare provisions in the uh, in the Health Care Act summary and timeline. Uh, the re quote: The report finds that PPACA will reduce direct spending by four hundred billion dollars over ten years and provide extra benefits to beneficiaries. You got to compute that. You ready? We're going to decrease the spending by four hundred billion dollars and we're going to provide extra benefits to to beneficiaries. Now they go on to say that they're going to accomplish this by quote. Major savings are expected from constraining Medicare's annual payment increases to certain providers, Brian, doctors, reducing payments to hospitals that serve a large number of low-income patients, okay, creating an independent payment advisory board to make changes in Medicare payment rates, all right, and modifying the high-income threshold adjustment for Part B premiums. So the translation of that is they're going to decrease payments to physicians. They're going to decrease payments to hospitals who are providing more care for low-income individuals. They're going to ration care, and they're going to decrease eligibility. How's that sound? Huh? Is, that, is, is that what you think this country needs? And, and uh, frankly, is that what the people who voted for this think they were getting? Uh, absolutely not. Absolutely not. So it can't work from a, from, a, from a financial standpoint, it doesn't work for businesses, it doesn't work for docs, as Brian has outlined in an excellent book uh, that, uh, that I, uh, that I uh, encourage you to read. doesn't work, most importantly, for patients. Patients get, can't navigate the system right now, and to confound it even more and make it more difficult for patients to receive care is, uh, is, is absolutely the wrong direction. And, and People talk about free market care and consumer-driven care and all that. I always talk about patient-centered care because I think it's important that we always concentrate on the patient. When you hear patient, what you ought to hear is you. This, this isn't somebody else out there that's trying to struggle through this system. This is you. This is me. This is our folks. This is our kids. Uh, and and for, for us to sit back and, and take quietly uh, an imposition on, on the ability of us to care for our, ourselves and our families is just absolutely unacceptable. And it doesn't work legally. Uh, I believe, as I, I suspect many of you do, that, it, that this bill is unconstitutional for a variety of reasons, not the least of which is the individual mandate that has been the Judge Vinson uh, last week. Ju Judge Vinson sure put a smile on my face last week. I don't know about you, but I was grinning from ear to ear for the whole, uh, for the whole day. And then when I read, the, the, read his, uh, uh, his findings, uh, it, it was even better than, I, than, than the headline uh, because it, it, it tied all of it in, as we had done, over the last 18 months to the individual mandate. And when, when you pull that linchpin out, when you declare that unconstitutional, which I believe it to be, then the whole thing comes, uh, comes absolutely uh, tumbling down. Now, from a policy standpoint, what, what, what we will be doing uh, that I believe is, is imperative is not just standing here and doing what I've done for the last five to six minutes, and that is to run down the program that is a disaster, but to offer positive alternatives. And, and, and that, that, I think, is the, uh, uh, is, is the message that I would want you to take out of here. The status quo is unacceptable. The law that they put in place is, is more unacceptable. But the solutions are out there, and they're positive, and they're patient-centered. And so it is imperative for you to remember that we can get folks covered. Everybody in this country can get covered with the insurance that they want for themselves and for their family. Uh, we can solve the insurance challenges of portability and pre-existing without putting the government in charge and, and giving people an opportunity to, to have the coverage that they want for themselves and for their families. We can make certain that we can write into the law that clinical decisions are made between patients and families and doctors and not anywhere else. And we can address the lawsuit abuse issues because you can't be serious about health reform if you're not serious about lawsuit abuse reform. We can do all of those things without putting the federal government in charge of a thing. <coughs> Nothing. Uh, you just need to make certain that the rules are in place and, and, and so that the system works in a way that is responsive to the people that are providing the care and, and those, uh, those uh, receiving the care. So uh, H.R. 3400 is the bill that we authored last year. We're working on it again. It's called the Empower Patients First Act. Um, and we will be coming out with that, I hope, by, uh, uh, by the end of this first quarter uh, and, and look forward to, to pushing that uh, as diligently as we can over the next, uh, over the next two years. What's happening politically? Uh, Politically, uh, we, we are uh, 
on our team and I'm trying to make certain that, that the American people understand and appreciate that we heard them. Uh, we had the vote in the House uh, two weeks ago to, to repeal uh, the, the uh, health care bill. Uh, 245 individuals voted yes. Uh, you'll remember that the bill when it passed had 219 uh, yes votes. Uh, you, you didn't read this in the newspaper, but the, the bipartisan vote in March of last year was a no vote, right? All Republicans except for one and 34 uh, Democrats voting no. Uh, the bipartisan vote this time was a yes vote to repeal. Uh, all Republicans and, and three brave Democrats voted with us for 245 uh, in, in the House. Um, people say, well, Price, why did you do that? It's not going anywhere. The Senate's not going to do anything with it. And if, even if they did, the President wouldn't, wouldn't sign it. Um, and it is incredibly important, I believe, for us to have done that because as the House of Representatives, as the body closest to the people, needs to be able to say, we heard you. November meant something. Uh, we understand and appreciate that the government is moving in, has been moving in the wrong direction. We heard you. We're interested in making certain that we're responsive to the desires that you want for yourself and for your communities uh, and, and for your families. And that's why uh, I think it was incredibly important to, to vote to repeal. Will it be repealed? Um, it, it, that, I doubt it's going to get through the legislative process, but the courts can, I think, uh, take care of that for us. The Supreme Court, I think, will do so, and I think it's going to be next session, next term as well. I doubt it's going to be this term. But from a political standpoint, we had to, had to make certain that we said to the American people, we, we heard you. Uh, secondly, the Senate is, is going to take uh, every opportunity that they can, I believe, to, make, to, to put forward on the floor a vote to repeal, a vote to repeal, a vote to repeal. Uh, and I don't know whether it'll pass the Senate, but I will tell you that there are 23 <coughs> Democrats who are up for re-election in November of 2012 uh, who, who don't want to vote on this once, let alone a dozen times. Uh, and every time that they vote no, to, bring, to allow that to come to the floor to be voted on, because these are procedural votes until you get the 60. Every time that they vote no, that, then that just turns up the heat a little bit uh, in, in, their, in their home state. Uh, so it's going to be a, a, a real challenge. And then politically, I think it's also important, again, to appreciate the, the, the positive solutions. Um, you know, we can talk about this being a, a, a just a, a game of uh, a political football. They win one, we win one, they win one, we win one. But this is about real people. This is about real issues. This is about real fundamental challenges that we have in this country as it relates to health care. And who's going to be making those decisions? Is it going to be you and your family? Or is it going to be the folks in Washington who have a better idea uh, or think they have a better idea? Uh, I know where I come down. I come down on the side of, of, of you and your family. And I know that's where the people come down. Because uh, because uh, they have seen uh, the the disaster that occurs when you put Washington uh, in charge. Let me just close by by uh, uh, giving you a couple challenges, and then I'll look forward to your to your questions. Um, I want to uh, this is this comes as as uh, uh, I'm kind of preaching to the choir here, but I want to encourage you to engage to a greater degree. Uh, I think November proved that when people get involved, that our system actually is responsive to the people. So I want to encourage you to, uh, to increase your engagement and your involvement. Secondly, I want to encourage you to recruit others. This is a, this is a great, great uh, turnout uh, uh, today. Uh, I hope that it invigorates you to go out and sometime this weekend when you're arguing about whether or not the Packers are going to win or the Steelers are going to win, that you say, hey, you know, there are some things that are going on that we need to talk about as a, as, as a, as a family member, as a neighbor, as a coworker. Uh, uh, as somebody who's sitting there watching your uh, kid play soccer or, uh, or, or football. Uh, th they're important things, and I hope that you're paying attention. And I'd like to invite you to whatever the GPPF is doing next time or whatever uh, makes sense to, to, to encourage people to get involved. And third and finally, I want to, uh, I want to challenge you to, uh, to believe. Uh, I've had more than my uh, fair share of conversations over the last two to four years with folks who say, um, I don't know if we're up to this. I don't know if America's up to this. I, 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 you know, I think our best days are probably behind us. Uh, I want to tell you that that's absolutely false. Uh, this is the greatest nation in the history of the world. It's a nation that's provided more liberty and more opportunity and more freedom and more success and more dreams realized than any country ever, ever. That's something to be proud of, yes, but it's also something to take, to take away and say we can, do, we can address any challenge we face if we just do it shoulder to shoulder, arm in arm, hand in hand, and recognize that it's God Almighty that gives us the blessing of being able to confront these challenges and do so proudly and optimistically. I'm honored to be with you today. Thank you so much.